Hare Krishna. So we welcome you all in today's class and would request blessings from all the devotees sitting here. Would, I would be sharing, be sharing what, what little understanding I have developed regarding the subject matter which we will discuss today. So would request for any corrections. If you see in my, my uh, offering, so please, I'm open to that. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are reading from the book I'll Build Your Temple by His Holiness Giriraj Swami Maharaj and starting from page 268 Things had quieted down in Juhu and every night I visited Prabhupada in his quarters, reported on my activities and received his instructions, the high point of my days. So here Maharaj is telling that every night he visited Prabhupada and gave a report of his activities. So this is a very important principle to give a report. Often sometimes when we are preaching or doing some services, we feel that we are not able to give reports timely to the authorities under whom we are doing the services. So, this somehow disconnects us to the parampara because we are not offering the services preaching that we have done to the parampara. And how we will offer to the parampara? We cannot go directly to Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj to offer our offerings. We will go through our local authority. And when we give a report, the practical thing is that we get instructions how uh, we can uh, do things better. So that will simplify our way. So that is why giving reports is very important. Next, flushed with enthusiasm, one evening after a meeting people in Bombay, I told him, I like preaching very much. Not I like preaching, Prabhupada replied. But preaching is my life. The statement, not I like preaching, but preaching is my life. This is actually very important. We should understand what is the difference between saying like and being it my life. Just like if somebody says, oh, I like vegetarian food. That, does, that means that he likes vegetarian food, but he is not vegetarian. He sometimes eats non-vegetarian food also. So when he gets an opportunity, he eats vegetarian. Hmm? So this statement is not very good. When you say like, that you're, you like the external things. You don't like, uh, you don't love the thing. Hmm? For example, if a wife says, Oh, I like my house also. I like my jewelry also. And I like my husband also. But then, if somebody is saying, I like my husband also, that means she doesn't love his husband. He, she, like, uh, she likes husband and like other people also. But that, then th this is not a very good thing. Here Prabhupada is saying, preaching is my life. I may be attracted to some principles of uh, preaching, like what things we may get. We may go in cars and planes, people may bow down to us and we say Hare Krishna to everyone. People like to hear our oratorship. We may like all these things. But when we say our preaching is my life, I establish the principles, I hold the principles of preaching to my heart, which are given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I'm holding those principles in my heart. And then I will not run away when there will be struggles. When there would be difficulties, I will not run away. So, even if whatever be the situation, I will be there to serve because preaching is my life. Preaching is the essence. So this statement, not I like preaching, Prabhupada replied, but preaching is my life. Prabhupada has proven this. In every difficult situation, he was ready to serve, ready to preach. Not every time he was offered royal treatment, but he was preaching because preaching is life, his life. Why? Because it was given by his Guru Maharaj. It was instruction by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Another evening, after a long day in the city, 
having a usual tra having as usual traveled there and back in crowd tra uh, trains to and fro from the train in a crowded bus and not having had anything to eat since morning i staggered up to prabhupad's room exhausted prabhupad looked at me and asked how are you feeling only then i did uh, only did i notice how weak and sick i was well frankly speaking shila prabhupad i replied i feel a little tired so we have have we have to use our energy completely for preaching for our services then only it will prove that preaching is my life he already knew and he immediately ordered grapes for me this is relationship he said that they were uh, that they were very good for strength and energy then he insisted that i eat the grapes in his presence and after a minute or two he asked if i was feeling stronger and yes i was to work very hard for krishna so and yes i was so here very important principle is that yes we all are involved in services and uh, there are then those who are there at temple or there at your home at your center they should welcome the devotees who go out for preaching to go out for hard struggle just like when uh, in our homes also when our father comes after a long day at office we we give him a good welcome by giving him nice food by giving a good gesture of good words this comforts the person so and it helps to develop the relationships also it helps the other person to become enthused for next day again for a hard a hard day so this kind of relationship should be there amongst us then prabhupad makes a very important statement and yes i was to work very hard for krishna for two days he concluded and then recuperate for three days that is not a very good proposal so it is not that we work hard for two days and then we take a we go on a break and then uh, we take a long break then we work for two three days and then we take a long break so so we have a principle of satatam satatam kirtayanto mam yatantasya drunagata satatam regularly yatantasya yatan means efforts so satatam you have to make efforts regularly hmm? so every time uh, this is word is said nityam bhagavat sevaya not that you read bhagavatam one day two days and then entire month we forget what we have read then we begin from the point we stopped one month back and then we start reading we have to read regularly anything which we are doing regularly the progress will be very high if you see mathematically also say if you take five numbers 100 150 40 10 the average will come out to be around 50 but if the numbers are like 75 80 85 60 80 85 80 although the number is less than 100 but the average is still very high why because the numbers are consistent so if there is some consistency in our activities then the result would be very high so similarly krishna says in bhagavad gita that we sh uh, that we should not eat very much we should not eat very less we should not sleep very much we should not sleep very less we should have a balanced life because we don't have to do preaching for two days or three days or a year or so we have to do preaching lifelong and for that preaching perspective we have to take our body lifelong so this is very important but to maintain this kind of attitude it requires discipline it requires discipline and what kind of discipline is required shila prabhupad explains in bhagavad gita chapter 3 verse number 30 prabhupad is saying that one has to become fully krishna conscious to discharge duties how how he has to discharge duties as if in a military discipline such an injunction may may make things little difficult nevertheless duties must be carried out with dependence on krishna so things would be difficult 
because doing things consistently is difficult. Starting a thing is easy, closing a thing is still more easy, but maintaining it is very difficult. So it will be difficult, but we have to depend on Krishna. Hmm. And another important statement uh, which I really, which inspires me here is, Arjuna did not have to consider the order of the Lord, he had to execute his order. So we don't have to consider that, okay, this is what we should be doing. I, I can do, I cannot do. No, we have to do it. Why? Because it has been ordered by Krishna. And we have to do as if in a military discipline. There would be inconveniences, yes, but the reward of all these inconveniences is very high, which is way ahead the price of all the inconveniences which we are having today. So we should maintain discipline. Only then we would be able to serve nicely all throughout, not for a few days. Another time, he encouraged me to dress better. He told me, there is a saying, one who is known as a Brahman doesn't have to wear a thread. People know you and they also like you, but still you should dress more nicely. So when Prabhupada was going to America, so he took help of uh, uh, Srimati uh, Murarji Devi's assistance help, Choksis, to get some nice clothes to go to America. Why? Because he has to address so many people. We may be very highly, highly Krishna conscious, but if we are not dressed nicely, then people may not be very encouraged to accept us. Hmm? Nobody would like to hear from a beggar. Obviously, we will not dress very lavishly in very high, uh, with high fashionable clothes. But we have to dress, dress like a gentleman. So before, before addressing, we have to dress nicely. Our dress should be simple, clean, well maintained, with proper tilak. And then people accept with, uh, wholeheartedly. I never knew when he would give me an instruction. And whenever he did, I concentrated my full attention and tried to commit to memory everything he said and this is the because Giriraj Maharaj he personally said that I have a very good memory and because that is the result this book is here he said that because I have a very good memory I was able to write remember all, a lot of things which I have written in the book but still Prabhupada said that but my method he could see wasn't the most reliable to remember he emphasized means to remember means to remember to write it down. He added, you should always carry a pen and paper and told me something else that he wanted me to remember. So, we should not always uh, depend on our intelligence to remember everything. Intelligence should be used to make plans how to serve nicely, use intelligence how to serve in a better way. We should not only not dependent on our intelligence to remember so many things. Because we'll forget. This is Kalyuga and Kalyuga we will forget the things. Better we should write. And it is our experience also, like when we study something and we write, then it helps us to remember better. Once His Holiness Bhakti Madhuri Govind Swami Maharaj, he was one of very senior disciples of Prabhupada, he was telling me in this context that you should always write when you are in a class. This will help you remember the things. But not that you write everything and make a transcript out of it. Then you, then it will not grow, go into your brain. Then if somebody comes and asks you, then you will have to see through your notes and tell. Because it, nothing has gone in your head. So we don't have to write the entire transcript. We should note down the things. And because when we are noting down the things, it registers in your mind. Then, Prabhupada knew my mind. I was always attracted to the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and I imagined that one day I would be like them roaming the forest of Vrindavan, chanting Krishna Krishna. But he was also concerned that his property be managed properly. And one evening he spoke to me about it. 
Raghunath Das managed his father's estate just like an expert businessman. He told me, similarly, you should also manage your father's estate. Then you go to Vrindavan and become a Goswami. So Prabhupada has, without of his great struggle, hard work has created this entire system for us. And so many temples, such a big organization. And if we will not make our efforts to keep it nicely, gradually the things will spoil. So it is our duty uh, to protect our father's prop property. The, our father, the spiritual master, our father, uh, uh, grandfather, Srila Prabhupada. So this is uh, the property in our legacy. So we should protect it very nicely. We should uh, uh, try to increase our father's wealth. If we are not able to increase the father's wealth, at least we should not spoil it. Uh, in this context, uh, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Gosai Maharaj was once saying that Srila Prabhupada told me to manage a scorn and management is my bhajan. So, whatever service has been given, that becomes your bhajan. Why? Because it belongs uh, to Srila Prabhupada, it belongs to Krishna. Another night, he explained to me the purpose of Gurukala in Krishna conscious children's ex execution, education. We cannot expect that many of the students will stay in the temple. He said, but they should be trained so nicely that no matter what they do later in life, they will never forget Krishna. So this is value education program. That our, stud our children should be taught the right values right from the beginning. Kaumara, Macharat, Pragya. Because when we teach all these values from the beginning, they will get registered in their mind. Because otherwise the material education will not help us to grow properly. For example, if you go outside some office areas, you will see that so many young, well-educated, earning lakhs of rupees per month, boys and girls, would come out thrice or four times in a day to a chai ki tapri and they will take a cup of tea and smoke. Now, scientifically, it is a proven fact that smoking leads to cancer. Smoking is injurious to health. This has nothing to do with religion also. People have seen this is happening. Still, they are smoking. The, the fumes of, of cigarette is not going to solve any of their office problems also. But still, they are smoking. Why? Because they are very well convinced in their mind that it will give them happiness. Despite seeing it's so much of harm which is happening. But on the other hand, you'll see our devotees who have taken uh, to Krishna consciousness and they're, and they're following four regulative principles and they're front so many things that may come, they will not accept it. If they will not accept it, they may not develop even temptations to have it. So this is a difference that comes. So uh, material education cannot help us to grow in this regard. It will always take us to sense gratification. Even if it, it is scientifically proven that it is harmful for him. They should be trained in such a nice way that no matter what they do in life, they will never forget God. And today, the, our education is making us godless. So we should be very careful in this regard. As the weather became more pleasant in the early evenings, Prabhupada began sitting on his building, building's roof. Satswarup would bring up Prabhupada's bolster pillow and a mass mattress so he could sit comfortably and speak with the guest. Or if no one came, sit and chant japa as the sky darkened. Prabhupada's apartment was in the mid middle of the tenement building so he could hear the children playing below. And sometimes he would comment how he wished that they could all become devotees. He said that he would like to propose to the tenants that they could all live on our land rent, rent free if only they would become devotees. Attend the temple programs, chant Hare Krishna and follow the regulative principles. 
So this land belongs to Prabhupada and Prabhupada is keeping us in his land. So we should behave like devotees following the four regulative principles and serving. Prabhupada was able to, uh, was ready to accept these tenants also to live free of cost, provided they become devotees. And if we are claiming to be devotees and we are not following these principles, then we will also lose the right to live on Prabhupada's land as, as a devotee. We should be very firm in following the principles. Shri, uh, Shri Bihari Lal Khandelwal was our first supporter in India to pledge 1 lakh rupees for any of Prabhupada's projects. One day his secretary phoned and gave us the news that Mr. Khandelwal's mother had passed away. We were requested to come and perform Kirtan. So I organized whatever devotees I could and we went to chant and offer some words of consolation from the Bhagavad Gita. Haridas, who did not know about uh, the program, was spanning Prabhupada on the terrace above the apartment that evening. And when at 7 o'clock Prabhupada noticed that there, were, there was no sound of Kirtan from the temple, he asked him to find the devotees and send them to the temple for Aarti. Haridas soon returned and told Prabhupada that he had looked everywhere and there was no devotees around. They must have gone to the city to collect and yet not returned, he suggested. This is not my idea, that they should go to the city and collect all day and night. Prabhupada said, our process is to please Krishna. They may go at 9 in the morning and return by 5 in the evening and then chant in front of deities, otherwise they will become like karmis. This is a, another very important teaching which comes over to us. That yes, we have to work very hard for Krishna, but then we should not forget the objective that we are doing everything for the pleasure of Krishna. And we have to rule, uh, we have to spend some personal time also with Krishna in the form of dancing in front of Krishna, chanting his holy names nicely, being uh, reading uh, Prabhupada books. This will help us to develop a relationship. Supposedly, if there's a husband who, who loves his wife very much and he is working day and night for the wife but doesn't have time for the wife, then this is not a very good thing. Even the wife will not feel very happy. So, yes, we have to work very hard for Krishna. And uh, while doing services, there would be, there are so much of management things that we would be doing, and which will require us to be worldly wise also. But in that process, we, our roots should always be connected to Krishna. If they are getting affected, then what will happen? Everything, all our activities will become commercialized. Suppose at least, suppose we are doing a program on Bhagavad Gita, we are inviting people to come to uh, hear Bhagavad Gita. If you hear Bhagavad Gita, it will help us to develop your personality, it will help you develop positivity, it will help you to have a good attitude, uh, uh, it will help you become more successful in life. We are telling so many glories of Bhagavad Gita, and help encouraging people to come and attend the classes. But why I, I myself is attending those classes, I'm not very attentive. Hmm. I may be using my phone seeing, uh, here and there, or I'm moving here and there, which may not be required for services that time. So this is not very good. Why I'm moving here and there so much? Why I'm getting disturbed while hearing the classes? because I'm not very much interested. Myself, I'm not interested to hear. So, my, I will get the benefit because I'm encouraging people to come to the class, but at the end that will become more like a salesman kind of thing. I'm not here to become a salesman of Krishna, I'm here to become a preacher to, of Krishna, a preacher who encourages people to come and know about Krishna. And I myself should also develop the attitude to understand about Krishna. Otherwise, gradually the whole thing will spoil. Hmm? So things will become shramevahi kevalam because we are not able to in 
develop the attachment to Krishna, then the things will become shramevai kevlam. Then we will feel, oh, I'm burnt out. I'm burnt out. Now I need a break. Now I need to change my services. I move. I need to move to another place. Now I will stop and do only bhajan. No, the bhajan should go uh, in parallel. So the two things should go parallel. No? Then only the things will happen. And this, and you know, when we do this, our attitude of our doing our services will also improve. Hmm? Supposedly, uh, recently we were doing a yatra in Vrindavan camp. So I was, just, I had some experience for that. Uh, I, I was thinking that if I am managing this camp, thinking that I am managing the camp, then my attitude will be what minimum I can give to everyone. Uh, to fulfill their needs. But if my attitude is to serve, I will think that what, what else I can do. As a manager, I would think that what minimum I can do to fulfill their needs. And when I'm doing services, I will think that what more I can do, what more I can do. So our attitude of serving will also change. Hmm? Why? Because now I'm thinking that all these people who have come to Vrindavan, they have come as a guest of Krishna. Uh, and just like when somebody comes to your home, uh, so all the family members are busy in serving. So as a family member of Krishna, I'm busy in services. So this is a home of Krishna. This temple is a home of Krishna. And as a family member of Krishna, I'm serving all the people who are coming here. So the management would uh, say, that what minimum I can give to people? And the service attitude will say, what more I can do for you. Why? Because now I am doing for the pleasure of Krishna. So you see, when, we, when our roots are connected with Krishna consciousness, roots are connected with proper chanting and hearing, then our serving attitude will also improve. Preaching doesn't mean only speaking. I may learn a few shlokas and speak. Preaching means sharing our experiences. What was your realization? What helped you to grow? What motivates you? What is your understanding? When you tell all these things, you know, people become very much encouraged to take to the process. But all this thing, these practical realizations will not come theoretically. They will come with practice. I give you a small example for this. Supposedly, if I'm from my right hand, I'm writing my name, Ram Haridas. And with my left hand, I am writing my name, Ram Haridas. There is a much difference in the writing. Both the information is coming from the same brain. But when I am writing with my right hand, I have well practice of writing with my right hand. But despite having the same intelligence, because my left hand is not practiced to write right, my writing is very shabby when I am writing with my left hand. So yes, you have a lot of intelligence, you have knowledge, but if you are not practicing this knowledge, the execution will not be very nice. Then what is the practice that we have to go, we have to do? The practice that we have to do is, abhya what abhyas is required? Hearing, Prabhupada tells. So Krishna says that to control the mind, you should practice. And the purport Prabhupada says, what practice is required? Hearing. What practice is required? Chanting. So this practice is required. Pra so this will help us to make our pre preaching and everything very successful. Preaching is uh, and all the services, they are not just the function of intelligence. Hmm? It is a function of intelligence which is connected to Krishna. Prabhupada gives a very nice example here. Uh, Prabhupada takes this verse, Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mamu payantite. Prabhupada explains why Krishna is writing dadami buddhi yogam tam, why he is not saying dadami buddhi tam. In one lecture Prabhupada is saying this. Because he is giving intelligence which is connected to Krishna. Prabhupada, uh, uh, Krishna is not giving us just buddhi, he is not giving just hoshyari to us. Hoshiari uh, to manage the things. He is giving us the intelligence which is connected to Krishna. 
And when will this happen? When we will make efforts lovingly to serve Krishna. And how will our efforts become lovingly to serve Krishna? When we know about Krishna. When we know about Krishna. Then only our efforts will be more lovingly. And how will I know, uh, how will I serve Krishna lovingly? When I understand my relationship with Krishna. Like if there's a lady and there are children, the lady is, is giving roti to the children, the sabji to the children. That's one. But the mother giving food to his his own children, that's still different. Because she knows the relationship with the children. She has a loving relationship with the children. So her activities would be way different from the activities she would have done for the stranger children. So we should know that for whom we are serving. That is very much required. So, and we talked about this point of discipline, the military discipline. If we are not practicing nicely, this military discipline after some time will become torture. This will become torture and we'll think that, oh, every morning I have to wake up. I have to do so many things. I have to do this, 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 this. One, two, three, four, five. I have to do so many things. We may do, how long artificially we can do? For some days, for some months, for few years. Then we'll tend to lose the things. Once in this regards, His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Maharaj was saying that you should read, uh, if one reads Chaitanya Charitamrit 108 times, you'll get love of Lord Chaitanya. Then a devotee asked, and Maharaj, did you read, have you read Chaitanya Charitamrit 108 times? Maharaj said, long time back I read. So, he, now Jayapataka Maharaj, he is involved in so many services all around the world. He is one of the most busiest personality on the planet. But still, he takes out so much of time to read the scriptures. To read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. Once Jayapataka Maharaj was saying that, I don't know how many times I have read Bhag Bhagavatam. So, they have developed a taste for, for reading also. They have developed a taste for chanting also. And if somehow we are feeling that, uh, okay, I'm doing so many services and I'm not very much inclined, not very much feeling enthused while chanting. That means there is some gap which is there. Because serving should lead to our increase in chanting and reading. Syan Mahat Sevaya Vipra. Isse kya hoga? Vasudeva Katha Ruchi. So Mahat Seva should lead to uh, Vasudev Katha Ruchi. And if it is not leading to Vasudev Katha Ruchi, that means something some gap is there in the process and we should take guidance how to reduce this gap and that is why reporting is also very important when we are serving reporting is also important then we will be able to understand where we are doing prayas excess of prayas where we should make more efforts we are making less efforts what better we can do that is why this reporting mechanism while we are doing services is important Otherwise, if we just go with the flow, after some time, we may not even exist in the system. Then, uh, then Prabhupada is saying that we are successful because we try to please Krishna and Krishna is merciful and reciprocates with us. Otherwise, Mr. Nair was much more powerful than we. Ha he had money, influence, his own daily newspaper, he had contacts, so many politicians and government officers and who are we? We had no money, no influence and no support. Yet we were successful because we were simply trying to please Krishna. Following the, the regulative principles of devotional service by Krishna's grace. So actual needle mover, actual Worker is Krishna only. Because Krishna is sitting in everyone's heart as Paramatma. I may go out to preach to so many people. But to whom only Krishna will aspire? That person will only accept. So when we go out to preach, there are four people 
involved. You are there, the person is there, the Paramatma in your heart is there, and the Paramatma in that person's heart is there. The four people involved. So let Krishna also uh, support, uh, add his bit. Not that I stand in front and no, I will do everything. How much I can do? I will be able to do little things only. But if Krishna plans that he is doing, then the things will happen automatically. So, our dependence of, on Krishna should be there. We should, uh, uh, at least mentally, we should pray to the Paramatma sitting in his heart also, that kindly inspire him to accept. Then he will accept. And if we, and we feel serve here Krishna nicely, then he will also reciprocate. Because our relationship with Krishna is not one-sided. It's two-sided, two-way relationship is there. And it's not that only I am making efforts and nothing is happening from the other side. It's a two-way relationship. If you do make efforts, then Krishna will reciprocate. So if I am trying to serve Krishna, then Krishna will make all the arrangements. Like supposedly for when we are on, on, on our office tour, we go out on an office tour, then it is uh, the company who arranges everything. Similarly, uh, uh, Krishna is arranging everything when we are going out for preaching. And we will pray to Krishna, then he is involved also. Because your objective and Krishna's objective is one. To, bring, to help the other person come to Krishna. But if my objective is, no, 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 no. I have to show my scholarly attitude. And I have to show that, oh, big shot I am. I know so many things. No, see, I can say, tell this also. I can tell this also. I can tell this also. Then Krishna will get aside. And say that, okay, you, you try only. So somehow or the other, we should involve Krishna. And then we, we may not see the involvement of Krishna happening immediately. Just like Prabhupada, when he was preaching, so it's, uh, he was making all his efforts, but he was continuously dependent on Krishna also. For so many, for practically four decades, when Prabhupada was preaching in India, and no results were happening, then it's not that Krishna is not involved in those cases. He's still involved. But suddenly, in ten years, he gave so much what cannot be achieved in, in, in a, even in a century also. He gave so much. So let Krishna decide what, what he wants to do, when he wants to do, where he wants to do. Let us depend on Krishna to make our efforts. Let us not give intelligence to Krishna. You do this way, you do this way, you do this way. Let him do his way. I will depend on Krishna to make my efforts. And success, no success, where success, how much success, let him decide. Because the parameter for my success is that I am making efforts for Krishna. And what will make my things much better when I am doing things while depending on Krishna. And how will I depend more on Krishna? When I am hearing properly, when I am chanting properly, when I am developing the right consciousness, I am not managing the things, I am serving. Then, then only my dependence will come. Simply by saying that I depend on you, the, those things will work, but not much. We have to develop our consciousness also. And that consciousness gradually reflects in our actions. And hence the reporting is very important. Because when we report all these things, then when, while reporting, our consciousness will also get verified. With, by which consciousness we are serving, what better we can do, Hmm? Where, where, where we are lagging and therefore our, everything will move very smoothly further hmm. later in 1974 George Harrison came to Juhu to visit Srila Prabhupada he was wearing a white kurta and white uh, yogi pants and had a bead bag I took him around the property and he expressed his appreciation for our work and encouraged us in our efforts. When at 12.30 we heard the conch shell blow uh, for Rajbog Arti, we went to the temple shed and George chose a pair of kartals and sang with other devotees. Puridas, originally, the, uh, originally from Scotland, was doing the Arti and when he turned to offer the ghee lamp to the devotees and saw George, his hand started trembling, 
so much that he thought he might drop the lamp. After the aarti, I arranged a plate of mahaprasad for George and accompanied him to meet Prabhupad in his apartment. Prabhupad greeted him warmly, and I left them together and returned to my office. Prabhupad was behind his desk. Kishore Das later described with George in front of him. I barely remember what uh, we said, but I remember the feelings of love that went back and forth between them. So even though George was not formally initiated, George Harrison, but because he had served very nicely and he contributed so much things, he had uh, there was such a loving relationship which has developed between Krishna and and between George Harrison and Prabhupada. It was tangible. I didn't really understand what the, this relationship was. I was young and here was a big rock star and a pure devotee of Krishna and there was, and there was me somewhere. But I, I could just see the feelings of love that, that went back and forth between Prabhupada and George. So all the relationships developed by service. All the relationships will develop by service. I, one example that uh, inspires me most in this case is, suppose if there is a three months old baby. Hmm? Now this two, three months old baby cannot recognize faces very nicely. Hmm? Now he has, his, uh, there are five women standing. All of them are mothers. But this, he, but this baby belongs to mother to only one. But when this baby goes in, on the lap of his own mother, then only the, the baby will be satisfied. Because that mother has served the baby. Now this mother, if this mother is wearing a sari, still he will be satisfied. His mother is wearing a burqa, covered his whole face, still he will be satisfied. A mother is wearing some western clothes, still he will be satisfied. Because he is on the lap of his mother and he has a relationship with the mother, because the mother has served the baby. So if between a baby who cannot understand the worldly things, people, everything, the relationship with the lady becomes very strong just by service. So see that how our relationship with Krishna, how relationship with our Guru will become strong. We both are conscious. We will become so strong if we serve nicely. So, we should try to serve very nicely because the, all relationships will develop only because of services. Otherwise, how what will be our relationship? If you are not serving, Hare Krishna, how are you? Everything is going nice. How is your office? How is your work? How is your home? How is your mother? How is your father? This. So, our relationship with our devotees, our relationship with our guru is not this Hare Krishna, how are you? How is mother? How is your family? Our relationship with our Guru, our relationship with the devotees will, should help us to take into Krishna Consciousness, help us to grow in Krishna Consciousness. That will happen when we will prove that we are, we are surrendered to you and this will, the indicator of this is that we are serving nicely. So through service the relationships will develop. After their conversation, George and Prabhupada were served hot prasad and ate side by side on chalky, small low wood tables, wooden tables. After two hours, a pludgy 12-year-old boy with glasses, the son of our friend and supporter, Mr. Valia of the Hare Krishna house, came to my little office at the back of the property. So a little boy comes to, the, uh, comes to Maharaj and he says, I heard George Harrison is here, he said. Yes, I replied, he is. I want to see him, he said. Well, you can't. He's meeting with Srila Prabhupada. He looked at me straight in the eyes, seizing me up and concluding that he wasn't going, wasn't going to get anywhere with me, turned dash to the stairs and bolted down to the steps. So he ran to the room where George Harrison and Prabhupada were sitting. Oh my God, I thought, he's going to try to find him. And I bounded down the stairs to, uh, in hot pursuit. I ran across to the next building and when I reached the second landing in front of Prabhupada's flat, I found the door ajar. The boy stood just inside and beyond him, George sat cross-legged 
and his back erect like a yogi a perfect disciple listening attentively at the feet of his master with the boy's abrupt appearance prabhupad and george had ended their meeting exchanging some final words george was gracious and appreciative prabhupad uh, prabhupad affectionate and kind i was upset that the boy had interrupted them but they took it as a matter of course maybe uh, it was a time for meeting to and maybe they were they saw it as krishna's arrangement so a uh, learning which we get gen- from this incident is that when two seniors they are talking we should not go and just dash into the conversation and disturb what is they are talking we generally say that we shouldn't do prajalpa and those seniors though they are talking obviously when they are talking they are not talking worldly things they are talking something which is very important spiritually very important they are talking and not every conversation can be done in front of anyone so if and um, certain conversation some certain confidential conversations require a mood and environment to happen and when it's when it is settled the mood is there the environment is then the two seniors they are talking and suddenly a neophyte they goes and disturbs the conversation it breaks then to have that conversation again may be very difficult so we should remember that if seniors they are talking we should we should not disturb even if we have to say hare krishna we should uh, from the behind we should say hare krishna and then move away not not go and disturb just to show our face and say hare krishna so this we should maintain uh, i think this is a one teaching which i see from this incident uh, which is very practical in our lives also in our dealings because we have so much of dealings with the devotees so i'll stop here hare krishna jagat guru shri prabhupad ki jai if there's any questions comments corrections please go ahead hare krishna हाँ हरे कृष्णा चलो प्रभुपात जी जब अमेरिका पहुँचे तो टॉम्पकिंस स्क्वेयर पार्ट में वो एक कर्ता लेकर कीर्तन कर रहे थे और उसी समय जो बहुत सारे हिप्पी लोग थे वो भी अपने सास बास के साथ कीर्तन कर रहे थे और डांस कर रहे थे और उनका जो फोटो है दूसरे दिन पेपर में आया और उसमें लिखा था प्रभुपाद जी हरे कृष्ण आंदोलन का प्रचार कर रहे हैं और ऐसे चित्र विचित्र लोग प्रभुपाद जी के पास आए जो कि बड़े बड़े बाल रखे हुए थे कोई वैदिक ट्रेडिशन जैसे नहीं लेकिन प्रभुपाद जी की कृपा से उन्होंने दुष्कर्म छोड़कर प्रभुपाद जी के शरण में आके अपना जीवन सफल बनाया Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Any does the devotee wants to say anything Thank you very much Ram Hari uh, just a question maybe out of the context can i So recently Narayan Murthy Infosys he said uh, 70 hours working so as you are working and also serving how do you see this thing what is your perspective on that he says work for 70 hours every indian should work for 70 hours so that indian econ- economy can go up he says at the salary of 40 hours they want us to work for 70 hours that's not good first secondly these materialistic people prabhupad say are like dogs and hogs so if dogs and hogs are saying anything we shouldn't just accept it blindly thirdly the objective of our working is because we have because we have to earn money right our objective is not to completely surrender to my office and give my whole life to the office no my objective is not that i want to give my life to krishna and if i'm not giving that thing to krishna 
there's no then i'm useless so let these people say anything so they are saying all these things because they know only these things but we have to see that what is the objective why we are working my objective of working is because i want to earn money i want money because i have not taken uh, as i have not become a full time devotee i have to work outside for some hours so i am working yes sometimes i have to stretch sometimes i can come early but then my uh, my objective is prime objective is to develop myself into krishna consciousness so these statements are not for the devotees that you work 70 hours let the materialistic gross even the materialistic people they are not accepting these statements you know and now those who are grossly materialistic who are extremely workaholic they may like all these statements so what to say about devotees even the materialistic doesn't accept these statements thank you harix any other point anyone jagat guru shri prabhupad ki jai hare krishna his grace ram